Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Lustre Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High, and though she's fond of her work and her pupils, these last few days have been rather hectic. In fact, she's even had to neglect her favorite faculty member, biology teacher Philip Boynton. And when I have to neglect Mr. Boynton, you can be sure things are hectic. Of course, like most scientific men, he's rather preoccupied. But he doesn't spend all his time looking at frogs and white mice in his laboratory. No, indeed. Every Friday, he goes to the zoo and looks at frogs. (laughs) But in spite of his apparent absorption in scientific matters... I can't help feeling that deep down underneath, there's a definite lack of interest in me. (laughs) But I keep trying. Now, take this past week, for example. I had to get the midterm examinations ready, but I wanted desperately to get my work done by Thursday afternoon so I could keep a date we had for that evening. But maybe I'd better start at the beginning. Thursday morning, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, woke me promptly at 7.30. Oh, Connie, it's 7.30. You've got to get up. Come on in, Mrs. Davis. <sighs> Time to rise and shine, my dear. Oh, I may rise, but you'll have to get your own shine. <laughs> I'm glad you got me up on time, though. Maybe I can make up a few questions before my first class. I don't think you should do anything before you finish your work at school. You've been going at this midterm examination too hard, Connie. I don't like to scare you, but I'm worried about your health. Oh, it's sweet of you to take such an interest in me, Mrs. Davis. But work doesn't bother me. I'm healthy as a horse. Well, just the same. Overwork isn't good for anyone, even a horse. You wouldn't want to get... (laughs) You wouldn't want to get gray around the mane, would you? Oh. (laughs) Heaven for Finn. But I figured I'll be all right if I keep my Fetlock shampooed regularly. Uh, luster cream shampooed, that is. You've got to build yourself up, Connie. Here, I've brought you some juice to drink before breakfast. Taste it and tell me what you think it's made of. I should know better, but here goes. <coughs> oh. oh, that's stronger than usual. What's in it, Connie? Well, I would say you took a raw potato, one hard-boiled egg, some rye crisp, a cup of kidney beans, and some spinach, and threw them into the mix, Master. You're slipping, dear. You forgot the hominy grits. (laughs) Well, I think I'll skip the juice this morning, Mrs. Davis. I've got to hurry. Walter Denton's picking me up in his car. Oh, is yours in the shop again? Oh, definitely. But the repair job this time won't cost me as much as the fine I had to pay. $20 $20 for parking. $20? Where in the world did you park? The lobby of the Stevens Hotel. <laughs> but how did you ever get in there? Just like anybody else, through the revolving door. <laughs> I'm glad you picked me up early, Walter. I've got some work to get done before my first class. Oh, that's all right, Miss Brooks. Glad to be of service. But did you say you've got work to do before your first class? Yes, Walter. I'm preparing questions for your midterm exams. It's rather difficult getting the right ones. Well, if I may make a suggestion, why don't you forget about the difficult questions and think up the simple ones? (laughs) That would make it easier on you, wouldn't it? Yes, but frankly, I question your motives. I wasn't thinking of myself, Miss Brooks. It's just that I've been looking at you while I'm driving here out of the corner of my eye, sort of, and, well, you... Walter, look out for that truck! Oh! Sorry. Guess I looked out of the wrong corner. (laughs) Anyway, I've noticed that you've changed a little. Changed, Walter? Yeah. I remember when you first got to Madison High, Miss Brooks. You were so vibrant. You were actually pulsating with life and energy and... Oh, gosh, you always seem to be sort of shimmering. And that's not all. I come in six delicious flavors. (laughs) I'm not kidding, Miss Brooks. You've got to watch your step. How long do you think the bloom of youth will cling to your cheeks? It's all according to how you put it on, Walter. (laughs) I hope you don't think I'm being too personal, Miss Brooks, but as I look at you, I can't help thinking of something. What's that? Did you ever drive out in the country and come to an old, deserted pasture? Well... And did you ever see at the end of the pasture 
one lonely old horse with sad brown eyes <laughs> staring over the fence rail. I knew I should have shampooed those fetlocks. <laughs> comparing you to a horse, Miss Brooks. I know, Walter. I'm not fast enough. Hmm? <laughs> now, it's just the look the horse gets in his eye when he's all worn out. As if to say, I've done my work and now I'm old. Just an old, tired, beat-up, lonely horse with nothing to show for my years of faithful service. It's his own fault. When he was young, he probably made a man's neck out of himself. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate your interest in me, Walter, but believe me, I'm not ready for the glue factory yet. <laughs> I hope you're not offended, Miss Brooks. Oh, of course I'm not, Walter. You know how I feel about you. Gosh, I think you're a thoroughbred. <laughs> I mean, I just don't want you to get run down. <laughs> I won't, Walter. I'm used to hard work. I've been working since I was a young girl. Really? I didn't think they let girls work way back in those days. <laughs> What kind of work did you do then? I helped my mother mostly. They had mothers in those days, too. Well, what did you do for your mother? While father was out hunting dinner, I used to help clean up our cave. <laughs> you sound a little sore, Miss Brooks. Oh, don't be silly, Walter. Why should I be sore? Well, the way I word things sometimes, it's a little unfortunate. Like the stuff about the horse and all. I know you meant it for my own good. Forget it, Walter. I have. Well, here we are. I'll find a place to park, Miss Brooks. You go ahead. Thanks, Walter. Oh, before you go... Yes, Miss Brooks? Got a piece of sugar? <laughs> our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith with an important announcement. Palm Olive Soap is giving away prizes worth $67,000. A grand prize of $25,000 in one lump sum or $100 a month for life. And that's not all. There are over 2,000 prizes in Palm Olive's big treasure chest contest. Ford sedans, Westinghouse laundromats, from Silver Fox scarves, Toastmaster toasters. And it's easy to enter. Complete the last line of this jingle. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get palm olive soap today. Da 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 da. Write your last line on a plain sheet of paper or use an official entry blank giving complete rules obtainable at your dealers. Include your own and dealer's name and address and mail with the big word palm olive from the front of the wrapper of one regular and one bath size cake of palm olive soap to palm olive, box 92, New York 8, New York. Now here's the jingle once more. A fresher, brighter looking skin is something I would like to win. I'll get Palm Olive soap today. Da 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 da. Mail your entry to Palm Olive, Box 92, New York 8, New York. But hurry, contest closes November 20th. Enter this week. Get Palm Olive soap for a lovelier complexion. Remember, doctors prove Palm Olive's beauty results. <laughs> Daddy, you're the principal of this school, and you've got to do something about it. About what, Harriet? About what I've been talking about. Miss Brooks overworking. I was talking to Walter Denton, and he told me that Mrs. Davis told him that Miss Brooks is just killing herself. But, Harriet, Now, I... one way to scare a woman into doing something, or not doing something for that matter, is to make her think she's losing her looks. And another way is to get her interested in doing something other than the thing you want her to stop doing. It's as simple as that. That isn't simple enough. What are you talking about, Harriet? Look, Dad, yeah. we've got to try and get Miss Brooks interested in something outside of schoolwork. Now, I'll talk to Mr. Boynton first. Then as soon as I find Miss Brooks, I'll send her in here to talk to you. Agree? Absolutely not. Good. I knew you'd see it my way. <laughs> the period, boys and girls. Class dismissed. Miss Brooks, could I talk to you for a minute? Certainly, Harriet. Come on up to my desk. Miss Brooks, as one woman to another, I'd like the privilege of being frank with you. Go ahead, Harriet. Well, you're working too hard, Miss Brooks, and it's beginning to show. Where? Oh. <laughs> I don't mean you're falling apart physically or anything. It's just your attitude. Since these midterm exams have to be written, 
You're almost constantly preoccupied. You don't seem to have your old sparkle and crackle. Oh, great. Now I'm a bowl of cereal. (laughs) I know conditions in school are pretty awful nowadays, and, well, you've got a big load to pull. Here we go again. (laughs) Idiot, Miss Brooks. There's a look you get sometimes, like a... Oh, don't say it, Harriet. Oh, I wouldn't hurt your feelings for the world, Miss Brooks. There's nothing really radically wrong with you. It's just that you're taking this exam too seriously. Why, I noticed you yesterday in the cafeteria with Mr. Boynton. It just seemed to nibble at your food. Oh, that's just to make Mr. Boynton feel at home. He's very fond of rabbits, you know. (laughs) You should forget about work when you're at lunch. Today I want you to relax. Sit down at that table and really tie the feed bag on. I'll cut those fetlocks off. That's what I'll do. Oh, by the way, Miss Brooks, Daddy would like to see you in his office. Mr. Conklin? What does he want to see me about, Harriet? Oh, I'm sure I don't know. Maybe as principal of this school, he feels it's his duty to keep his teachers happy. Of course, you've got to know how to handle Daddy. What do you mean, Harriet? Just take the bit in your teeth and don't let him drive you too hard. (laughs) Okay. Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. Have a chair. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. I was just finishing this report from the school board. Will you excuse me for a moment? Certainly, sir. (laughs) Oh, she is so. (laughs) Excuse me, Miss Brooks. Hello? Hello. Is that you, Osgood? Oh, yes, my dear. I'm glad you got my message to call me back. I just wanted to remind you that this afternoon we're going, uh, you know where, for tea. Oh, you mean to Mrs. Davis's. I haven't seen Margaret in ever so long. Miss Brooks will be there, too, won't she? Yes, Martha, that's the purpose of the little gathering, to help that party get her mind off. Well, that is, uh, she's been working quite hard lately, and she looks like... That is her face. Uh, Confound it, Martha, I can't talk now. Oh, sure you can, Mr. Conklin. Just make believe I'm deaf, too. (laughs) I'll call you later, Martha. Goodbye. Goodbye, Osgood. Oh, uh, just one thing. Yes? If you see Miss Brooks, don't say anything about our dropping in today. That's surprise her. Yes, Martha. Goodbye. <laughs> <clears throat> that was my wife. She sends her regards, Miss Brooks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Conklin. Uh, no doubt you're wondering why I sent for you. Well, I'll be brief. During the war, my outfit had the most consistently high morale of any unit in Camp Bobrick, Ohio. Now... What has all this to do with you, you ask? A reasonable question. What has all this to do with you? I really don't know, Mr. Conklin. (laughs) Of course you don't. Now, take the time we ran out of ping-pong balls. It was nobody's fault. (laughs) As supply officer in charge of the post exchange, I had discharged my duties faithfully. But still, there it was. No ping-pong balls. (laughs) There were murmurings from the men. Muttering and discontent swept through the recreation hall. But I refused to be thrown into a panic. Do you know what I did, Miss Brooks? I made those men use their heads. Weren't they a little big? <laughs> I mean, uh, how, Mr. Conklin? By finding another hobby. And that's what I called you here to tell you, Miss Brooks. You've got to find a hobby. Oh, but I have a hobby, Mr. Conklin. Oh, what is it? Collecting a biology teacher. Uh, that is, Mr. Boynton and I go to the zoo every Friday. I'm afraid that isn't enough of a change for you, Miss Brooks. No, what you've got to do is learn how to relax. Have a good time. Oh, but Mr. Carpenter... Don't I... interrupt. You've got to concentrate on some outside interest, Miss Brooks. Fun. That's what you've got to have. Fun and gaiety. You've just got to enjoy life more. Be merry. Laugh. Laugh. <laughs> I don't know just what sort of form your hobby should take, but you've got to get one. You've got to, Miss oh, Brooks. Oh, please, Mr. Conklin, remember your blood pressure. Uh, I'll get one. I'll have a ginger peachy time. I'll go to Arthur Murray's. I'll do something. You wait and see. Good. Good. That's all I want, Miss Brooks, for my teachers to be happy. That's all I want, Miss Brooks, for my teachers to be happy. Contented and happy. Not nervous. I don't want a school full of nervous racks. You hear me? No nerve. No long <laughs> Before I 
go, Mr. Conklin. Well? May I make a suggestion? What is it? Did you ever think of getting a hobby? <laughs> The cafeteria is pretty crowded today, Miss Brooks. I don't know how you managed to get this table. Oh, it wasn't hard, Mr. Boynton. I just told the two students who were sitting here I'd flunk them if they didn't leave. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't do that, Miss Brooks. No, not actually. I'll get our lunch, Miss Brooks. Just tell me what you want. Oh, I'll go along. It's fun to shove the little tray along the little railing. It gives me a feeling of power. <laughs> no, no, I'd rather you sit here and take it easy. I've noticed how hard you've been working, Miss Brooks, and now that I see you... Uh... Well, there's, there's something in your eyes lately that... Well, I can't be specific, but they just seem to say... All these years of faithful service, and what have I got to show for it? Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I, I know you've got to get your exam questions set, but the race isn't always to the swift. You've been whipping yourself terribly. Oh, fine. <laughs> now I'm my own jockey. <laughs> well, I just want you to know, Miss Brooks, that if, if there's anything troubling you, anything at all... I'd be happy to have you cry on my shoulder. I'd rather laugh up your sleeve. I mean, (laughs) laugh on that shoulder. Oh, look, Mr. Boynton, it's nice of you to be so concerned, but there's nothing wrong with me. You're right. There there isn't a thing wrong with you that a good hobby won't cure. Yes, I know. And I've thought of a wonderful hobby. What's that, Miss Brooks? It's called short ribs of beef and boiled potato. Would you get me some? (laughs) Why, certainly. You hold our places here and I'll be right back. Okay, Mr. Boynton. Well, let's see now. Where's that book of questions in English lit? Maybe I can get a little work done while I'm waiting. Hi, Miss Brooks. Eat lunch yet? No, Walter, but Mr. Boynton's getting me some. Oh, and then I won't sit down. Good. <laughs> have you seen Harriet Conklin? No, not since this morning, Walter. Uh, she seems to have noticed my disintegration, too. Really? Mine has been the swiftest decline since the fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> Tell me something, Miss Brooks. Did you ever collect stamps? No, I never did. Then you're in for a treat. See you later with my album. We'll put in a few hundred new specimens I just got. A few hundred? Oh, look, Walter, I'm allergic to mucilage. You better stop at the delicatessen and pick up a spare tongue. (laughs) Well, so long, Miss Brooks. I'll see you after school. So long, Walter. Oh, what's the use? I'll just have to lock myself in a room if I want to work. Hello, Miss Brooks. Have a nice chat with Daddy? Yes, Harriet. A nice apoplectic tete-a-tete. Your father told me to get a hobby. Have you hit on one yet? No, not yet. Oh, I'm glad. I've got one you'll just go mad for. Patternless crossword puzzles. I'll bring a big super special one over this afternoon. See you then, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Harriet. And goodbye to my date with Mr. Boynton tonight. Oh, did someone mention my name? Oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. Say, those short ribs look good. Yes, they do. I hope you like to eat them the way I do. Plenty of horseradish. Don't mention it. (laughs) Well, let's begin. Here's your dish, and here's your knife and fork. Oh, thank you. That was good. What's for dessert? (laughs) Look, you didn't bolt your lunch down already. I'm afraid I did, Mr. Boynton. I've got to get some work done before my afternoon classes. Well, this is terrible, Miss Brooks. You're, you're all keyed up. Look, do you play chess? Not if I can help it, Mr. Boynton. Well, I'm not very good at it, but it's wonderful relaxation. I'd be happy to teach you if you... Yes, well, some other time, Mr. Boynton. Now, if you'll just hand me my check. Oh, oh that's all right, Miss Brooks. I'll pay your, pay your check for you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Boynton. Uh, you can give me the money later on. <laughs> Come on in. Well, I didn't get much of my test prepared at school, Mrs. Davis, so I've got to get to work right now. That can wait. I've got the yarn right here and two sets of extra large needles. Just look at them. My seconds will call on you at dawn. (laughs) What in the world are those foils for, Mrs. Davis? I'm going to teach you to knit. With this equipment, it won't be any time at all before you have yourself a nice afghan. I don't want myself a nice afghan. Give me an American boy every time. (laughs) Knitting is just wonderful for the nerves, Connie. Just sit right here and help me roll this skein into a ball. Oh, but Mrs. Davis... I do it for you, Connie. Oh, all right. What do I do first? Just hold your hands about six inches apart. That's the girl. Now I'll start winding. Around and around. 
and around 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 and around. Why, what's the matter, Connie? Nothing. I just wanted to break the monotony. Now, tell the truth, Connie. Isn't this fun? Oh, yes, indeed. This is more fun than drawing your fingernail over a slate. <laughs> now that we've got a ball, I'll show you how to cast on. Yeah. Okay. What did you say, dear? Oh, it's the cat. Go away, Minerva. We're busy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Maybe she wants some milk. No, she just had her lunch. I made it for her myself. Maybe she wants some bicarbonate. <laughs> Now, the uh, first thing we do is catch the yarn onto one needle. So, like this, mm -hmm. and like this. Meow. Mm -hmm. Oh, now don't unwind the yarn, Minerva. Be a good girl now. Yes, Minerva, be a good girl, and I'll boost you up to the goldfish bowl later on. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Davis, if it's all the same to you, let's let Minerva knit for a while, and I'll play with the ball. Uh -huh. You can catch on to it in no time, Connie. Oh, I really must get some work done. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to go into the dining room. I can spread my reference books out on the table there. Hmm? Very well, Connie. We'll do some more knitting, but the dining room? Oh, I knew there was something I forgot. You better get in there right away, Connie. You've got company. That's what I like, prompt messages. Well, hello. Well, I guess I beat you home, Miss Brooks. I guess you did, Mr. Boynton. So did I, Miss Brooks. Harriet, did you two come over together? Yes, we did. Oh. I drove them. All this and water, too? <laughs> well, now that we're all here, suppose we all keep nice and quiet while I do some work. Hmm? Oh, you can work later, Miss Brooks. Here, I've got the board all set up. Let me show you how to play chess. Well, go ahead, Miss Brooks. I'll start sorting my stamps and looking for prize specimens to show you. And I'll get a crossword puzzle started, so it won't be too difficult Oh, for but you. listen... The first I... row here, the, these little ones here, are pawns. They move one or two spaces forward. I know the moves of the pieces, Mr. Boynton, but honestly, well, I just Well, let's just play have... one game, Miss Brooks. I'll go first. There. Now, don't rush yourself. Chess is a very patient, easy-going game. Have you got a clean handkerchief, Miss Brooks? I have to clean my magnifying glass. <laughs> Here you are, Walter. Oh, Miss Brooks. Yes, Harriet? What's a six-letter word for horse? Have you tried B-R-O-O-K-S? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got an E-Q-U-I-N-E. -E. Look at this sesquicentennial Dutch Guiana, Miss Brooks. You can tell by the cancellation it's legitimate. Oh, look through the glass. Oh, very pretty, Walter. It's your move, Miss Brooks. What? Oh, the game. I'll just go here. Oh, here's a funny coincidence, Miss Brooks. I need a six-letter word for hobby. M-U-R-D-E-R. -E <laughs> hey, look at this one. I'll bet there aren't three like it in the whole country. Is that good? I'll get it. Margaret? Well, Martha Conklin, and all good. Hello, Margaret. Where's the hobby room? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the dining room here, August. Come along, folks. Here we are. Miss Brooks, guess who's here? Dr. Gallup looking for a new hobby. <laughs> Oh, hi. Hi. Well, let's not waste any time. We'll get right down to our hobbies. I've brought over a bag of toys to be fixed for Christmas. I do this work every year. And I help Mrs. Conklin with my portable carpentry set. Uh, may I set my vice up over here? Oh, yes, Mr. Uh, Conklin, of course. I'll just dump these toys out on the table if I may. There. There we are. Uh, that's not a legal move, Miss Brooks. Well, I was just... Oh, the chess game. I'm sorry, Mr. Boynton. I'll take it back. I'll move my knight instead. There. Ah, this will do you a world of good, Miss Brooks. Give her a broken toy to fix up, Martha. Think you'd like to stuff a few dolls, Miss Brooks? I'd just love to stuff a few dolls, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Before you do that, Miss Brooks, take this glass and look at this early Cameroon. What's a four-letter word for purgatory? Harriet. Well, that's got... <laughs> That's got seven letters. Oh, you mean Harriet. The, the knight can only go two squares vertical and one diagonal. Oh, look at this cute little mechanical man. He can walk and everything. I'll just wind him up. Yeah. Hey, give me some of those pool toys to plane down, Martha. Here you are, dear. Are you having fun, Miss Brooks? Oh, loads, Mrs. Conklin. But would you call the little mechanical man back? He's biting my knitting needles. <laughs> 
Those electric drills are beauty. I think it was a wonderful idea, Daddy. Our having a hobby afternoon together. Oh, so do I, Olga. It's so entertaining. Sure takes your mind off things. I'd better saw some of this down here. What do you mean, Mr. Boynton? The knight can only move two squared vertical. Oh, here's an awfully cute little wagon. It'll be as good as new when we fix the bell. There. Martha, could you show me that new drop stitch you mentioned last week on the phone? Oh, that wasn't a drop stitch, Margaret. Uh, that was a cable, I believe. These loose nails will never do. Never do. Motor seems to be broken on this, sir. Uh, <laughs> you can tell by the shape of the printing that this is a oh, genuine. Oh, nine letter work for Billy Go. This horn is fine now. Uh, a little more planing and drilling to do it. Does it? The last toy is fixed. Yes, and the dolls are all stuffed and painted. Uh, it's been a lovely afternoon, Mrs. Davis. Thank you, Osgood. It was nice to have you over. Well, the main thing, of course, is that we were able to interest Miss Brooks in something that could take... Miss Brooks? Miss Brooks? She isn't here. Oh, that's funny. Where could she be? I'll answer it. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Davis. This is Miss Brooks. Connie! Where in the world are you? I've discovered a wonderful hobby, Mrs. Davis. What is it, Connie? Making up examination questions in the balcony of the bijou. Eve <laughs> Martin and our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try luster cream shampoo. And be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I didn't get many questions done, but I did see Rita Hayworth in Loves of Carmen. I knew, of course, that with the examination question still to be done, I'd have to cancel my date with Mr. Boynton. But that was almost inevitable from the beginning. When I finally reached home, I knew I'd have to buckle down. So I headed right to the dining room, opened the door, and turned on the light. Of course, you can move the night too horizontal. Why, Mr. Boynton, if I'd known you were still here, I'd never have turned the lights on. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Tom Ollie Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. Dentists know what cleans teeth best. And over 4,000 dentists say Colgate Tooth Powder with a two-minute routine gets teeth sparkling and super clean. So to remove dull film and get your teeth shining clean, just brush teeth two minutes, morning and night, with Colgate Tooth Powder. Brush inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Always brush away from the gums. See how quickly this gets teeth naturally bright. It removes dull film that improper brushing misses. And Colgate Tooth Powder also sweetens your breath. Try it. Buy Colgate Tooth Powder today. <laughs> For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of 
our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.